before we say anything concerning them. So are we to wait until all the prophecies take place and then say, yes, I knew this was going to happen. You remember in September 11, 2001, when those towers came falling down? When you woke up that morning, did you think that those towers were going to come down? Now, I remember reading in, the book, in a book called Last Day Events. I was reading this book in 1999. And as I read through the book, I read where the towers in New York City was going to fall down. I read where it said it was going to burn as if it was made of pitch and that the fire trucks would be unable to stop the fires. I read that. And I remember sitting in a, a, a car seat as I was reading, and I said to myself, I wonder if it's going to be literally just like this take place. And then just a little longer, it happened just as the prophecy read. You know what I thought in my mind? I said from that point on, everything the prophecy says, all we have to do is believe them. Just as it reads. We don't have to wonder if it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen just as God said it was. He told us before it came to pass so that when it come to pass, we might believe it's going to take place just as God said it was. But think about this. There were many people. I don't know that before prayer meetings, very few people came. But if you had a church at that time, you went to church, that prayer meeting after September 11, prayer meetings were full. People were saying, oh, the, the world is coming to an end. We better. And they just, you know, got right. But then, you know, it's almost like that boy to cry wolf. We play around so long. We go back and forth and back and forth. And to finally we say, we're just going to keep living like we please. And this is where, almost where we are today. But I remember there were many people at that time that began to start saying, yes, we knew it was going to take place right here, volume 9 of the testimonies, page 11. Spirit of prophecy told us this. But what good is it to talk about it after it happens? If we really believe it, we will talk about it when? Before it happens. You see, it's easy to say that's an event that was going to happen, then it happens. Then you say, well, we, the Bible said it was going to happen. It's easy to do that. It doesn't take faith to do that. It takes faith when there has never been rain before, and God says in 120 years it's going to rain, and you start building the boat, that takes faith. It takes faith when everybody else says, oh, you don't need to do that. That's fanatical. That's extremist. Oh, get out of the city. No, no, stay where you are. Everything's all right. You don't have to worry about any preparation. You, you know, when, when those type of statements are made, it takes faith to do what Jesus says. You know what God is looking for? God is looking for people not to think of better ways to do evangelism. And right now, you know, our church is struggling in evangelism. And in evangelism, we're struggling. We're thinking maybe our ways are, are, are too old. If we change certain methods, we can get more people. That's not what the problem is. Maybe if we just do strange and new things, maybe if we do what all the other, other churches in Babylon are doing, maybe we can get more people if we worship like them and preach like them and talk what they talk and do what they do and follow their programs, maybe that might do it. But that is not the secret. Jesus is not waiting for people to come up with better plans. All he's looking for is a generation that will do just what he says. And Noah, Noah didn't make up anything. When he built that ark, did Noah make up that plans of that ark or did he simply follow the directions that God gave him? God told him a flood was coming. God told him how to prepare. And once God told us what's coming, the next thing we need to understand is if these things are coming, what should you and I be doing in preparation? Because truly, you don't think we can live how we're living now and actually be ready for this crisis. Do you believe that? Or do you believe that it calls for a work of preparation? Some people say, well, I'm comfortable in my lifestyle. Well, I'm going to tell you, comfortable lifestyles are not going to get us ready for the crisis. It is going to take a work of preparation that we have not yet made. A preparation in every aspect of our lives. We're going to have to go to God and say, Lord, I need you to give me a new heart. I need you to give me a new mind so that whatever you say, I'm willing to do. Do you think that it was fun for Noah to know that he was building an ark where animals was going to get on and they might be smelling this way and that? Or do you think he just said, well, you know, the crisis is going to be so severe. Whatever you say, Lord, I'm willing to do it. We need to come to the mindset today. We need to say, Lord, give us the mind of Jesus so that whatever you say, because I'm going to show you tonight that we're coming to a great crisis. You know, right now today, we're in an economical crisis. Did you know that? I wonder what prophecy has to say about it. I wonder if God has told us about it. I wonder if what we're seeing today is a part of a series of events that God has given us in the book of Revelation 13 because what we're seeing is colossal. And we better understand, you know, sometimes 
Satan can, can do things that touches our silken cords of affection. You know what silken cords of affection is? Silken cords of affection are those little ties that we have to people, maybe brother or sister, or father or mother, or people we love, ties that we have to us that Satan uses to slip in deception. Sometimes he might get your husband or wife or children to make you do something that you don't want to do, but you're willing to do it because you love them, so you're willing to make a compromise with God because you want to keep the love of your family or the peace of your family. These silken cords of affection, you know right now, everybody was so excited when Barack Obama won the election. And most people don't even know what it means. We just jump up because of the affection of here now is a man that has been a minority showing that minorities have, have come up and won a presidential election. And, and, and God, God does not have some higher nationality and some lower nationality. With God, everything is equal. Amen? Can someone tap that young lady? I think she, she's not feeling. Are you okay? Okay. But, but there, no, the no nationalities... Our, uh, no nationality is above another nationality with God. Everyone is, cre is created equal. Is that right? Yes. And so we know that Satan has brought racial divide and division. And it's all right. God has made all men equal. But brothers and sisters, let us not be so wedded to cultures and ideas before we understand what's happening in the Bible. Is that right? You see, there are many people, I've heard some people say, oh, Barack Obama, he's a, a, a Muslim. Now, brothers and sisters, let us not make thrust at presidents or people because we have racial prejudice. I've heard different people make thrust at him and saying, oh, we shouldn't be happy of a black man being president. Oh, what can they do? But, but that's not the issue. You follow me? It's not that he's some Muslim trying to destroy the country. He could be a very good and sincere man. Nothing wrong with that. But brothers and sisters, we know something that nothing else in the world knows. God has given us something in the Bible that has given us a knowledge more advanced than anything this world has. God has given us, as the remnant church, the ability to understand what is to take place before it happens, and most of us have not tapped into it. And so while we're saying Hosanna, we don't know that in a few moments we're going to hear crucify. Crucify. And on that Sunday when they said Hosanna to Jesus, those same people were saying crucify him just a few days later. Did you know that? Strange the changes that can be made. Is that right? Now, this says, are we to wait until the fulfillment of the prophecies of the end before we say anything concerning them? Of what value will our words be then? Shall we wait until God's judgments fall upon the transgressor before we tell him how to avoid them? Where is our faith? Where? In the word of God, must we see things foretold come to pass before we will believe what he has said? I mean, if God has told us already what is going to take place, must we wait until it happens before we will believe it and talk about it? Or can we believe what he said, see it, and then say, let's get ready because we know it's coming. This says, in clear, distinct rays, light has come to us, showing us that the great day of the Lord is what? Near and at hand, even at the... Now, who said that? Who, who made that statement? Jesus. We've been studying about that, even at the doors. Then it says, let us what? Read and understand when? You see, if we wait for these prophecies to be fulfilled, when the national Sunday laws pass, it is what? It is too late. When the national Sunday Law is passed. We know that at that point it's too late. So everything that we study in the remnant as we're moving for this crisis, we should be studying of the events that lead up to the National Sunday Law. This is what we should be studying now because when that National Sunday Law is passed, is it time to get a relationship with Jesus? You see, some people think that when the Sunday Law is passed, that then they can get Jesus into their hearts. But the Sunday Law is what it, we might call a squeeze, a test. And we're like sponges. Now, let me ask you a question. If you put a sponge and grape juice and you squeeze that sponge, when you squeeze it, what comes out? Grape juice. If you take a sponge and you put it in orange juice, and then you take that, that sponge out and you squeeze it, what comes out? 
orange juice. If you put it in water and you, 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 you soak it up and you squeeze it, what comes out? Water. Now, brothers and sisters, you and I are like sponges. The Sunday law is like the squeeze. And only what is in you is going to come out of you. And if Christ is not in you at the National Sunday Law, Jesus Christ cannot come out of you. Are you following me? And so the hope of glory is Christ in us. So when the squeeze of the Sunday Law comes, the only thing that will come out of us is that which was in us, which was Jesus Christ. So the work of the gospel for the remnant is to get Christ in us completely by the passing of what? Of the National Sunday Law. Is that right? Now, the question tonight is, you and I, if we will be honest with ourselves, and we don't have to look at everybody else, but if we will be honest with ourselves, we know that we've been squeezed and Christ didn't come out. Is that right? Certain words we say, we know that when we're squeezed, Christ is not in there. Because some words come out that Christ will never speak. And if we don't say them, sometimes thoughts come out that Christ will never think. And so when we're squeezed and when we're pressed, when we're tested, it begins to reveal when we compromise on diet and dress and education and all these other things in the world, when we compromise on what we watch on the television or where we go, when we compromise on these things, what happens is, step by step, we're preparing ourselves to make the full compromise of the mark of the beast. And either Christ is coming in us or the devil is coming in us. And I tell you, most of the time the devil comes out of us, is that right? And so if we're honest with ourselves, we'll know Christ is not in us the way he needs to be right now, this exact moment. And if we only have a little while to do this, what we need to do, once we see what's happening, we need to begin to start studying what do we need to do so that Christ can take full possession of our lives. We're going to be studying that this week coming. Because once we know what's happening, then we need to say, Lord, I need Jesus in my life. The purpose of prophecy is to direct our minds to Jesus. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Where until you do well that you take heed as into a light that shineth into a dark place until the day dawn and the day, who is the day star? Until Jesus arises in our heart. So the purpose of prophecy is to bring us to the place where Jesus can come into our hearts. And if Jesus is in our hearts when we're squeezed, the only thing that will come out of us is Jesus Christ. So we need to know that, is that right? And I'm going to show you as we continue to study tonight and tomorrow, we're going to see clearly now that we have come to the final part of the crisis. Now this says, let us read and understand before it's too late. Tell me, if a young man is on a train track, and a train is coming, and you look at him and you tell him, man, you're on a train track, that train is coming, what good would it be to tell him that a train was coming after the train has demolished him? And then you look back and say, well, I knew that train was coming. Is that, would that help him? Now, he's dead then, isn't he? So if ever that person on the train tracks is going to be helped, he must be told when? Before it takes place. And so as I talk to you tonight, even as I stand here now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to see what is happening and developing because we just have a little longer.